Welcome everyone, I've got the 2019 Toyota Avalon review coming at you right now. Toyota has been hard at work injecting new life into their vehicles and this 2019 Toyota Avalon Touring is no exception. It does a great job of blending performance, comfort, and luxury. We're going to take a detailed look at everything and go for a test drive. Big thank you to Toyota for providing this for me to review for you guys today. Let's get started. Thank you for tuning in everyone. Let's take a quick look at the exterior of the Avalon. So as you can see, this is much more aggressive and sporty looking than previously. Toyota was going for a more premium and athletic stance at the same time. This is now on the TNGA platform, Toyota New Global Architecture. So we should expect it to handle and perform pretty well. Starting out with these headlights, I'm a big fan of the Avalon headlights. We've got LED headlights, LED daytime running lights. We've got integrated daytime running lights right here. You can kind of see those a little flicker below the headlight. They look pretty cool at night. Um, we have a smoked chrome bezel on the XSC and the Touring, dynamic LED turn signals as well, and you even get adaptive cornering lights on the top trims. Check out that turn signal. It's, uh, you can see how it kind of starts on the inside and then moves out to the outside. That's pretty unique and uh, kind of cool. These headlights do a really good job at night. They're definitely really bright. I've had no issues with them at all. The Avalon's grill has definitely been a big discussion since this thing came out. It is really large. Most of it is not functional. Sporty trims like the XSC and the Touring, you'll get this piano black grill with the mesh insert. On the XLE and the Limited, you'll have almost, they almost kind of look like slats and it's a grayer looking grill. I'd like to know what you guys think. You know, I think it looks okay. It's definitely big, but we also get these functional vents over here, which is kind of a nice touch. I think it looks pretty cool, gives this car a little bit more aggressiveness, kind of a unique design right there. Now what do y'all think of this red color from Toyota? I think it looks pretty darn sharp. It's on the darker side. I've had quite a few people say that they really like this red. Uh, it's not so bright and obnoxious like some. It's a little bit darker and deeper. You even do get a little bit of a speckle on it, but not quite as metallic-y as some. Now, talking about the wheels, we have 19 inch wheels on the XSC and the Touring right here. You'll have 17s and 18s on the other trims. And those will sit on two, or 235 width tires will sit on those as well. Of course, you get vented disc brakes in the front, but solid disc brakes in the back. And then talking about mirrors here, we've got a piano black mirror on our trim, the XSC and the Touring as well. Otherwise, you'll have body colored mirrors. And we do get the little turn signal in those. And another cool thing about that is their auto dimming on the Touring and the Limited trim on both the driver and the passenger side. This trim of the Avalon and the XSC, the Touring and the XSC do give you a sport tuned suspension and our Touring model has an adaptive variable suspension. So we will have to get on the road and see how it handles. On the sportier trims, we also get this black piano black lip spoiler right here. And another cool thing from Toyota, it's not just the front, it's even the rear that gives us that dynamic turn signal. Those are also LED taillights, of course. And then we have a sport tuned exhaust on the Touring model right here. And you'll get this dual exhaust with quad tips on the XSC and the Touring. Now talking about safety, of course we've, get, we've got Toyota's suite of safety features standard on every single trim level. That'll give us pre-collision with pedestrian detection, full speed radar cruise control, lane departure with steering assist, not lane keep assist, but steering assist, and automatic high beams, plus blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert is standard. Now for the cargo space of the Avalon, you can open it traditionally in there with the key fob or push a button here and it will lift up for itself. Let's take a look. Now the cargo area for the Avalon is just over 16 cubic feet, which is bigger than the Camry, bigger than the Buick LaCrosse, La Cross, smaller than the Impala and the Taurus, uh, and about the same as the Kia Cadenza and the Chrysler 300. But as you can see, I do have a carry-on suitcase right there. Um, you can fold both seats down just by pulling the tab right there on each side. Just a regular folding chair. Got some decent space on the side over here, as well as the side over there. And our tester does have the cargo net right here. Plus, as you can see, for groceries or whatever you need, you've got a hook on each side. And of course, you don't want to forget, we do have a compact spare tire under there with our tool set. Now let's go ahead and see what our friend Dave Erickson from Everyman Driver can put in this trunk. Nolan, here's how I've utilized the cargo capacity in the back of the Avalon. I'm a pretty active guy. I get out and exercise. I've got my uh, 
oversized light kit here for some of the production work I do from time to time. Here is my martial arts Taekwondo gear bag, easy to put back there. And of course, one of my favorite hobbies this year, my Everyman Driver golf club. So that easily fits back here with over 16 cubic feet of volume. You can get back here if you wanted to, I wouldn't do that. Uh, in fact, I had these seats folded down, took the front wheel off of my bicycle and was able to stuff that down here as well thanks to that 60-40 split. So even though I have this stuff with these three big items, you can still have a little bit room left for a grocery run. So I can still utilize some more space right here. Anyways, that's how I use the cargo volume in the back of the Avalon. Here's our key fob for the Avalon. It's typical Toyota and different from the Camry, I believe, is this little trim piece right here, this little metal trim piece. But one disappointing thing is that remote start only comes with the remote connect system, which is complimentary for six months. Otherwise, you gotta pay 80 bucks a year or eight bucks a month after that. I am a fan of Toyota's smart key system. If you're really close to it, in order to lock it, all you gotta do is touch it. There's a couple lines on the door and then you can walk away. Otherwise, it's got a real quick sensor to unlock it behind the door, just like that. Now it's time for the range test. All right, y'all, I just got it to go right here. And we are pretty darn far away, quite a bit further than the Mazda 6. And let me tell you, this is way further away than previous Toyota key fobs. Checking out the inside of the Avalon, on our trim we get this nice ultra suede material where you can get this synthetic armrest which is very soft, soft up here. All automatic windows. Over there we've got our memory controls for our, our two position memory settings for our driver's seat. My bottle does fit down here but there's really not much of a storage area that's pretty small. I could definitely see that being improved. Um, nice aluminum trim right there, even aluminum door handle. Let's go ahead and shut the door. And just like the Camry, the door is pretty similar. It feels pretty heavy. It's not quite as solid sounding as I was hoping for. But once we move across in this cabin, on the XLE, you'll get engineered wood. The Limited will give you real wood. And then the XSE and the Touring Trim, the Touring Trim that we have right here, gives you aluminum accent pieces. Every single Avalon will give you a leather steering wheel. I really enjoy the steering wheel. We've got some nice perforations on the side, soft leather on the top and the bottom. We have the heated steering wheel. The top trims will give you a heated wheel, but it's only on the perforated section. The top and bottom are not heated. We've got good steering wheel controls for the radio, voice, information display, cruise control, lane keeping assist, even your radar distance. Uh, you can control a lot with the steering wheel. There's no windshield wipe, or there's no automatic rain sensing windshield wipers, which would be nice. Something I was expecting in this car for this price. Um, your controls over here for automatic high beams, traction control, your heated steering wheel button, trunk, fuel door, and your camera button, which I'll show you in a little bit. And then just a nice touch soft material over here, a really big air vent over here. Uh, this does really well, so no problem staying cool in this car. We've got push button start. Let's go ahead and start it up. Foot on the brake, push the button. And I've got the steering wheel and the seat set right now for the entrance and exit system. So the steering wheel actually moves. You can turn that off. Every single Avalon will give us the seven inch display. It covers a lot of information. First, you can kind of see the regular gauges on the sides right there. But in that seven inch display, we have um, an eco area where you can see your fuel economy. And that is my fuel economy over about half a tank with some idling, some sport driving, some mixed driving, eco driving. And then when we scroll through this, you can see your driving support for your lane keeping assist, or for your steering assist, your radar cruise control, all that will be right there. Your audio, you can see your information for your safety, safety systems right here as well. Plus you can customize those settings going through this screen, even our heads up display. It's a pretty nice big heads up display. It works really well. It's got a tachometer. It even shows you your gear in manual mode, which is pretty cool. The steering wheel on the XSE and the Touring will give us these paddle shifters. They're pretty small and they are plastic, but at least we get those. It makes for a little bit more fun while you're driving. The dash is made up of a soft touch material. It, it looks nice. It's nice and clean running across. You can see the aluminum piece running right there and kind of this unique texture up here, soft touch material right here. Now, every Avalon will give us this 9-inch touchscreen. This is the Entune 3.0. Our home screen right here, you can customize with four different things, two, three, whatever you want. You can pick what you want right here. 
shortcut you can just go to it so this is our audio screen you can customize things in there let's check out our menu um, you can customize a lot we go to the setup there's really a lot that you can go through over here you even have Wi-Fi as well you can change the colors of things our map you can pinch and zoom it shows you traffic you can drag it around it works pretty well I still prefer um, a phone based navigation system but at least you have CarPlay but no Android Auto with this Avalon now at least not for this 2019 model maybe in the future um, and then with our Intune we have our app suite Intune 3.0 app suite go to that over here it's kinda like things that you can get on your phone but you have them built in right here we have a real volume knob real tuning knob standard will be an eight speaker system on the lower trims but our trim will give us uh, what is it 1200 watt JBL system the JBL system in Toyota right here this JBL system has been benchmarked to meet upper class systems and they've done a really good job it's 14 speakers 1200 watt subwoofer I believe it's a 10 inch subwoofer and it does pretty well one note on the JBL system though is that unlike Lexus where I can turn their systems up and there's not really any noise that comes from the doors or anything there's a little bit of shimmy a little bit of rattle when that bass gets to kicking in this car so definitely not quite as much insulation or build quality as you get in the Lexus of course dual zone climate control standard on every trim we've got real physical buttons right here running through here as well we even have three tier ventilated seats in our trim three tier heated seats in every single trim the ventilated seats do work pretty well I can actually feel it and sometimes I've actually turned it off because I'm actually cool enough most of the time that's not the case so these do work well I definitely appreciate that going down here we kind of have a unique design it's like a slab you know kind of almost like a floating design on the dash these are plasticky and quite frankly I think they just get in the way you can have access from behind it I would like to just kind of do away with this whole thing on each side because there's not very much clearance right here but um, we have a soft touch material right here for storage we can move this out of the way for a wireless charging pad on every trim except XLE but it's optional on the XLE and then below we have a little charging port right there 12 volt power outlet now when I put this shifter this leather wrap shifter in reverse we get a backup camera a 360 camera with our advanced safety package it's even got clearance lines right there intelligent clearance sonar so it will beep to kind of let you know if you have enough clearance if you're backing out or going to hit something it will let you know on either side and you can have your camera in the front you can see either side of the car which is pretty sweet so you really shouldn't be bumping into anything when you have this car that's for sure the backup camera has a few different views uh, let me go ahead and put it in park or put it in drive then we can put it in s for plus and minus mode for manual shifting or while we are in drive i'm going to turn the 360 camera on so you can see what's in front of you you can have it on automatic so when you hit a low speed it will automatically come on so you may be parking situations it will turn on you can see around the vehicle you can have it spin around for an around view monitor it's pretty awesome pretty sweet 360 camera going back we do have some decent sized cup holders this one's kind of square shaped in the front a little bit interesting you can fit a little bit different objects in there but both of them are large enough to fit my bottle and larger takeout drinks as well we have soft touch material around those cup holders soft touch material on this armrest right here open this up we have a little bit of ambient lighting in there two fast charging USB ports um, the Apple CarPlay port auxiliary port and then, and then we have this little tray which is removable and softly lined it doesn't slide forward and backwards but you can take it out really easily now one complaint is this glove box it doesn't lock and it almost literally falls open falls out anyways it's kind of like a downhill so not very big not very convenient storage place and it doesn't lock but every trim gives you an automatic dimming rear view mirror on our trim we have the frameless mirror and then that dim the dimming mirrors will give you the garage link controls right there the entire visor on both sides will slide out both have vanity mirrors and lights as well we have LED lighting in here on both sides and just your basic moonroof controls 
It's not a panoramic moonroof, just a normal size moonroof. It'd be nice to see a panoramic roof since the Camry has one. I'm really surprised by that. And then when we turn around, we've got, uh, at least we've got a window by that rear pillar. Otherwise, we have a pretty small back window and some large headrests. So thank goodness for the 360 camera, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and all of that. When it comes to the front seats of the Avalon, there's differences on every single trim level. So on the XLE and the XSE, you have eight-way power seat with two-way lumbar. Uh, those will be soft tech seats, which is their synthetic material. And the XSE will actually give you ultra suede material, just like the Touring. Once you get to the limited trim, you'll get actual premium leather instead of the soft techs. And it will have an eight-way driver's seat with four-way lumbar adjustment and that'll be heated and ventilated. And then in the Touring trim that we have right here, we have uh, the Softex material with the Ultra Suede, and it's heated and ventilated, and it feels pretty good. The ventilation feels pretty darn good, and it gives us four-way lumbar support as well. Another thing is that the Limited and the Touring give you two-position memory settings. The steering wheel right here is power adjustable, and it has a pretty decent range of motion when you go both up and down. It just takes a little while to get there. And in terms of these actual seats, I think everything is great from the bottom all the way up to the top of the shoulders or the upper back. I feel like these headrests, I've, I've had to recline a little further back than I want to because these headrests are pretty aggressive forward, these head restraints. And that's something that I don't prefer, especially if you maybe have a man bun or if you have a ponytail, these might be a nuisance. But these seats otherwise are pretty comfortable. They have some decent bolstering around them. And like I said, in this touring trim, we have the ultra suede material inside of them. They're pretty soft, uh, definitely very comfortable otherwise. And the great news is that the passenger seat gets the exact same adjustments as the driver's seat. All right, so hopping into the back seat of the Avalon, this is still a pretty nice place to be. At five foot nine, sitting behind myself, you can see that I've got just tons of knee space, a good amount of foot space, a really good amount of head space as well. We've got our old, old blank handles and little hooks on the side. I really like having this armrest right here. It's got a couple cup holders, even a slot to put your phone. It's soft and padded. We even have LED lighting up above. Plus on our door, we have the same ultra suede material, a nice soft armrest, good bottle holder down below. So definitely pretty nice. We even have our air vents back here, plus two fast charging USB ports. And then in our trim and the limited trim, we get the heated rear seats. Now to see someone a little bit taller in that back seat plus the car seat, I've got my friend Dave Erickson from Everyman Driver to show you. Let's check it out. Thanks, Nolan. I'm 5'11", and here's my position as the driver all week, and here's how much room I have between my knees and the back of the seat. So you're looking about that much. As far as headroom, I do appreciate the, the roof line here, that it does have an indent to give me a little bit more space. It's comfortable, and for more perspective, on real life situations. I got the infant car seat over here and the little guy sitting next to me looking at me like, dad, what are you doing? I'm over here sitting and you're talking to nobody. So, so if you have a regular size adult right here, you got your infant car seat all strapped in, you might be able to get one more person here who's a little bit tinier or you know another one of the, your, your kiddos. But if I were to sit right here on this hump, you could get one more adult next to me, but it'll be a, a tight fit in the back. Right, buddy? All right. All right, Nolan, back to you. Now under the hood, this is where all the magic happens. And we still get a three and a half liter V6 like the old generation, but now we've got 301 horsepower, 267 pound-feet of torque. And this is Toyota's D4S system with direct and port injection. This is paired with an eight-speed automatic direct shift transmission. And for MPGs, you will get 22 in the city and 31 on the highway for this one. Otherwise, you'll get 32 on the highway with the XLE. And if MPGs are your main game and what you're worried about, of course you can get the two and a half liter four cylinder with the electric motor hybrid for 43 MPG combined. Now let's go ahead and take this thing for a drive and check out that sport tuned exhaust. What is going on everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in. Test drive is always my favorite part. So first of all, my first impression of the Avalon is that it definitely feels very buttoned down. It feels kind of like a heavier vehicle. Uh, it definitely feels pretty solid. 
I can definitely feel the same DNA of the Camry with this TNGA platform. It has a lot of the same feel to it, which is no, no big surprise, but um, it feels really good. It's got a great balance of ride comfort and handling. We'll go over some more of that in a little bit. Visibility out of the Avalon is pretty good. Looking out this front window, we've got some small pillars. Definitely no trouble with that. Um, the overall feel of the steering wheel is it's pretty responsive, it's pretty sharp, it's kind of got a medium tone to it, it's not super heavy, it's not super light. Now in this Touring trim, we've got, or the XSC and the Touring, you get a sport tuned suspension, so you can't expect it to be quite as soft, and we have the adaptive variable suspension in here. And we're gonna put it in Sport and Sport Plus later, so please wait for that. Um, but overall, ride comfort is good, it's pretty soft, you know, you can hit some big things and feel it, a little more than you might expect for an Avalon, but it really flattens things out really well. First response on this handling is that it's pretty sharp, and this car will definitely hold its own going around some corners. It's surprisingly flat. It does feel kind of large. You know, it, it feels heavy. When you get going quick around a turn, you can definitely feel the weight in this car, which is one downfall, but you can certainly push it a little bit, and it'll respond well for you. Now in terms of the noise, vibration, and harshness, the all Avalon trims will give you an acoustic windshield, acoustic front windows as well. It'd be nice if those back windows could be acoustic, but you know, they gotta kinda save that for Lexus, but it's definitely been a pretty quiet ride, especially in town city driving. Um, it does let a little bit more road, road noise in, so when you are on a rougher textured road, you can, you can definitely hear that. But overall, it's quieter than the Camry, as you would expect, and it's definitely a, definitely a pretty comfortable place to be with noise. Now we're in normal mode. Pedal down. <laughs> and that engine will scream. This is definitely one that you want to get the RPMs up because with this naturally aspirated engine, the power comes out a little later. And uh, let's, let's put it in sport mode. Oh, did you guys hear that? Oh man, definitely definitely an aggra aggressive growl to this thing, that's for sure. I'm gonna put it back in normal for a little bit. We'll put it in Sport and Sport Plus in a little bit. So one thing about the Avalon with that noise, some of that throaty noise that you get, we get an intake sound generator. Um, we do have active noise cancellation to keep noise down, but we also get engine sound enhancement as well. So this Avalon, will intentionally make itself sound a little bit sportier, a little bit more of a growl. <laughs> All right, so it's not gonna, you know, give you whiplash that fast, but it's very confident. I, I really have enjoyed my time with this. You don't, like I said, you, you kinda wanna rev it out if you wanna get all the power, but you definitely don't have to. It's got pretty good throttle response in town, definitely no troubles with that. In fact, when I've had it in eco mode, um, it's pretty, it definitely dulls the response, but it's enough to get you through without you feeling like you want more power, and you can get some pretty good MPGs when you try. When I was trying, I was getting around 26 with mixed driving, so definitely not bad. Now I just put it in sport mode, and you can definitely hear more come out in sport mode. It holds its RPMs a little bit. Takes a second to kick down. Now one thing with this automatic transmission is that it's an eight speed auto and I've seen complaints on the Camry's eight speed V eight speed and that it, it kind of hunts for gears. I haven't really noticed that except maybe it, it just delay it's a little bit more delayed when it wants to kick down sometimes but overall it seems like a very smooth transmission. Now I've got the Avalon in Sport Plus, traction control on, and it's not a perfect flat road, but let's give it some, let's give her the beans. <laughs> Ooh. 60. All right, so initial squeak, then traction control kicked on and toned it down a little bit, but definitely pretty quick. You can, I really like how this thing sounds when you rev it out. And, oh. That sounds really good for an Avalon. Oh my. And the brakes. 
The brakes are good. This car definitely does feel kind of heavy. The brakes do a pretty good job. I'd like to see the rear brakes be ventilated as well, but we've got vented in the front. Uh, let's go ahead and put it in manual mode. Just move the shifter over. And you can see on your heads up display what gear you're in, which is pretty cool. Definitely a flat car. This really stays flat around these turns. <laughs> Ooh, oh man, okay. Right there, the weight of this car, I definitely felt like I was gonna slide out a little bit. Definitely does get to being kinda heavy. Um, so on a little bit more of a calm note, I got it back in normal now. The safety features work pretty well. The radar cruise can be a little bit, it definitely wants to push on the brakes a little bit more than I was hoping for, but it keeps the distance pretty well and it doesn't slam on the brakes when someone pulls in front of you. It adapts pretty well and kinda eases you back. But following it definitely can be a little bit raunchy on those brakes one more corner definitely a confident car that's for sure definitely enjoyed my time and you could hear the uh, lane keeping or the lane departure alert right there the steering assist works well it's a little bit more proactive it will let you get over a little bit further, but you can kind of modify those settings as well on how aggressive it is. So in conclusion with this car, it's $44,000. And to be honest, guys, it's definitely, a, it's definitely a bargain version of the Lexus. The new Lexus ES just came out and that thing is pretty impressive. But really, when you kind of look at everything in here, I know it's not a competitor with the Accord, but the Accord offers just about everything that this has. Maybe just a little bit less, but it's quite a bit less expensive. Um, in terms of interior space, that is almost about the same. Now this definitely has more than the Camry will give you, which it should, and I wish the Camry would give you a little bit more because it, it definitely held out on a few things, but overall the Avalon is a very nice car. Toyota's done really well making it feel you know pretty luxurious for the Toyota brand. Obviously if you want more you gotta go to Lexus, but compared to the Impala, compared to the Kia Cadenza, this thing will definitely hold its own. I want to thank y'all so much for watching. I've got a five likes and dislikes video on this car as well. I've got a camera review and a cord review, and I'll be getting some more up every single week. So please be sure to watch those. I'll catch you guys later.